Recording in progress. When combined with a BIM process, Dynamo allows the designer to fluidly develop complex problems and manipulate the elements in a project. In this video, you can see updates to a stadium bowl assembly within the Revit Architecture project environment. problems and manipulate the elements in a project. When combined with a BIM process, Dynamo allows the designer to fluidly develop complex problems and manipulate the elements in a project. In this video, you can see updates to a stadium bowl assembly within the Revit Architecture project environment. As the model updates, changes can be seen in 3D as well as in a Revit schedule. In this context, Dynamo proves useful as not only a tool for generative design, but also building information model management. When combined with a BIM process, Dynamo allows the designer to fluidly develop complex problems and manipulate the elements in a project. In this video, you can see updates to a stadium bowl assembly within the Revit Architecture project environment. As the model updates, changes can be seen in 3D as well as in a Revit schedule. In this context, Dynamo proves useful as not only a tool for generative design, 
but also building information model management. When combined with a BIM process, Dynamo allows the designer to fluidly develop complex problems and manipulate the elements in a project. In this video, you can see updates to a stadium bowl assembly within the Revit architecture project environment. As the model updates, changes can be seen in 3D as well as in a Revit schedule. In this context, Dynamo proves useful as not only a tool for generative design, but also building information model management. When combined with a BIM process, Dynamo allows the designer to fluidly develop complex problems and manipulate the elements in a project. In this video, you can see updates to a stadium bowl assembly within the Revit architecture project environment. As the model updates, changes can be seen in 3D as well as in a Revit schedule. In this context, Dynamo proves useful as not only a tool for generative design, but also building information model management.
When combined with a BIM process, Dynamo allows the designer to fluidly develop complex problems and manipulate the elements in a project. In this video, you can see updates to a stadium bowl assembly within the Revit Architecture project environment. As the model updates, changes can be seen in 3D as well as in a Revit schedule. In this context, Dynamo proves useful as not only a tool for generative design, but also building information model management. When combined with a BIM process, Dynamo allows the designer to fluidly develop complex problems and manipulate the elements in a project. In this video, you can see updates to a stadium bowl assembly within the Revit Architecture project environment. As the model updates, changes can be seen in 3D as well as in a Revit schedule. In this context, Dynamo proves useful as not only a tool for generative design, but also building information model management. When combined with a BIM process, Dynamo allows the designer to fluidly develop complex problems and manipulate the elements in a project. In this video, you can see updates to a stadium bowl assembly within the Revit Architecture project environment. As the model updates, changes can be seen in 3D as well as in a Revit schedule. In this context, Dynamo proves useful as not only a tool for generative design, but also building information model management.
Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the webinar of Empowering Design with Computational Creativity. So uh, we'll be talking about the two topic here, that is the dynamo and the twin motion. So let me just share the PPT of today's uh, webinar. So in today's uh, workshop, we'll be covering the Revit Dynamo. So under the topic, we'll be having uh, discussing about the computational design, the concept of uh, visual programming, and also uh, applications uh, of Dynamo in Revit. Also, Twin Motion, which is a rendering uh, tool, we'll be using it, uh, creating live link between the model and the uh, Twin Motion. And also we'll see that how real time renders work with twin motion. We'll be having the question and answer round. So you all can post your questions in the chat box. We'll be taking it after the session. Okay, so before we start uh, with the uh, webinar, uh, let me introduce uh, our company. So we are the global uh, group of India's leading design and construction technology, right? Uh, we help uh, unleash the uh, ideas. So we are uh, from since 1987, we are serving the Indian customers of 20,000 plus customers and we are spread across uh, Delhi, Bangalore, Mumbai and Hyderabad. Also, we are having 40 plus uh, BIM expert in this organization. So this is a journey from CAT Studio to the Arkins Group. We are also a digitalization partner uh, with the Americans, CIMAC and APAC. So the global uh, service platform uh, that we are, that we are providing, so we are having the 50 plus offices that is globally. We are located at 18 plus countries uh, with uh, supporting 32 languages uh, worldwide. We are having a serving uh, customers of 40,000 plus uh, customers, also 30,000 plus solution profit. So uh, let me invite Ms. Kanchan from Ethos to introduce about the design advanced competition. Uh, welcome, uh, Ms. Kanchan. Uh, over to you. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Ms. Toma. Ms. Toma. Uh, I'll just be sharing my screen. Uh, if you could enable it for me. Yes, I have enabled. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, so I'll be uh, quickly introducing to you um, the Design Advance 2023 competition. The theme this year is 20, uh, for 2023 is reimagining railway stations as urban nodes. So uh, we have uh, always been introduced to railway stations or like what we've already uh, always perceived them as uh, is uh, as transit hubs or just places where you go to uh, board and get out of trains and like just reach from one point of uh, one point to another point and like get to your destination. But what if they could become centers of services in urban places? And what if they could become places where people could work and learn and heal and play and connect with each other and rejuvenate themselves basically the possibilities are endless and what if we could reimagine themselves as what if we could reimagine them as something beyond transit hubs so there are basically three parts to this question or uh, this premise uh, we are uh, reimagining railway stations in X, Y, and Z cities, which is basically just a classification of Indian cities. 
and in short it just means all indian uh, all the places in india that have been designated as cities beyond being just transit hubs and uh, more as nodes of urban activity uh the second part would be filling in the gaps in that town's life uh whatever that town or that city is lacking whether it's something uh, related to healthcare services or education or maybe it requires more work spaces for people to freely uh work from home or work from somewhere else or like hotels or like tourism entertainment commercial developments anything that the city might not have enough of and the third part would be improving the user experience within the railway station uh, because currently uh, wherever like most places of most places in india and maybe in even other railway stations our experiences might not always be pleasant so how do we as designers and architects and engineers and people involved in this community how do we uh, manage to improve the user experience with wayfinding entry and exit points and uh, how do we improve the experience of laying over at a railway station while we are waiting for our next connecting train and how do we make it into a place where one has to be rather than just a means to an end delving deeper into the brief uh, how do we uh, think about user behavior in public spaces through design we have to encourage uh, good behavior through our design choices and contribute to the safety and place making of the site and overall make it a pleasant experience for everyone like for all user groups and speaking of user groups we have to think about the variety of user groups and their needs and preferences and what kind of choices that they are making while using that space uh while designing each uh railway station project uh we have to embrace the local cultural heritage the architectural ident identity and the vernacular building practices so depending upon each site each place has its own architectural identity and its own architectural heritage and vernacular knowledge that has been passed down through generations and decades and we have to incorporate that into our learnings as well of course we have to make sustainable choices while designing and encourage sustainable choices by users when they are using the space that we have designed uh through promoting walkability and making uh, net zero cycles for energy and water efficient waste management and in every little choice that we make we should be aware and conscious of making sustainable choices uh obvious of course uh, we are uh, encouraging and promoting that uh, you define your own program and functions because the sites are located all over india so depending on your site you can choose your own program and functions depending on the requirements of course it goes without saying that the spaces that we design should be accessible and inclusive for all and they should not be excluding or hindering anyone's access so how do you go about selecting your site for this competition you can uh, choose a railway station site in any of the uh, cities in uh, or uh, you can go up to rnda site and there are about 140 or 150 uh, active sites that are being redeveloped under the scheme and uh, uh you have to adhere to the following parameters like choose a site between 3 to 12 acres uh, i know it's uh, pointed out as uh, 1 to 4 acres but it has been revised to 3 to 12 acres uh follow the locally applicable bylaws or the national building code in case the lo locally applicable bylaws are not present and uh, lastly refer to the manual for standards and specifications of railway stations there are two volumes you can refer to both whichever parts apply to your design and you can refer to them while you're designing the railway station part 
a few frequently asked questions. Uh, is there any registration fee uh, for the competition and workshops? No, both are absolutely free. And uh, there is no registration fee at all for competition or the workshops that you attend. Can postgraduate students take part? Yes, undergraduate and postgraduate students of architecture, design, civil engineering, and related fields can take part in the competition. Can the team members be from different colleges? Yes, they can be. And inter-college teams, inter-batch teams are also allowed. Can we define our area programs? Yes, you can uh, choose the functions and what kind of spaces you are distributing and allotting to each function. That is completely up to you and your site requirements. Uh, in absence of local bylaws, uh, like we've already said, uh, national building code should be used. And where will the workshops be announced? So to all those who have registered for design advanced competition, um, before each workshop, a uh, notification email goes to their registered email ID. So uh, register for design advance and you'll be automatically notified whenever there is, an, uh, there is a new workshop coming up. And can we choose a site on our own? Yes, of course, you can choose a site on your own. And uh, you can either refer to the RLDA list. Or if you're choosing your own site, just remember to justify why you've chosen to uh, reimagine that particular railway station site. Are there any more free workshops and design lectures coming up? Uh, yes, I believe there is at least one more uh, coming up. and. All the past uh, workshops that have been con uh, conducted so far, you can find the recordings uh, on the web page for the competition. Uh, the, re uh, the registration link will lead you to the web page where the past recordings can be found. Uh, so the competition is open to all undergraduate and postgraduate students of architecture, planning, engineering, and design across the country, and including those who have graduated in 2023. Maximum three members in a team are allowed. The registration deadline is 20th of October, which is very close. And the submission deadline is towards the end of this month, 27th of October. And you can visit www.designadvance.in to register for the competition. Thank you so much. Over to Soma. Thank you, Ms. Kanchan, uh, for that insightful uh, uh, competition detail. Uh, so now I would call upon uh, Mr. Warupam, uh, who is also an architect, to start off with the webinar. So he'll be covering the Dynamo topic for today's web webinar. Over to you, Warupam. Okay, so thank you, Soma. Uh, I think uh, my voice is audible. Uh, so, so, uh, so let me introduce um, so it, and uh, I'm also <laughs> I'm working in Capricorn as a beam specialist architecture. So today I'm <clears throat> covering the topics about uh, the uh, Dynamo and. Uh, uh, about the revit and dynamo so how to interlink with it between that so uh, let me share my screen so i think my screen was visible okay so to uh, to to the introduction uh, about the dynamo revit so <clears throat> Let me some audio set. Okay. So um in before we start about the dynamo, so let's have some uh, basic concept about the uh, parametric design. So I think uh, most of the people uh, heard about the uh, parametric design. So it is a design process that a combination of uh, parameters and uh, some uh, vari uh, variables uh, inputs uh, for achieve their design goal. So most of the uh, most of the uh, designers, uh, most of the architect, most of the uh, building designers have uh, used that uh, designer to control uh, between their parameters, control between their uh, uh, between their uh, 
geometrical aspects or also that helps with outcomes of their uh, design with the help of uh, parametric design. So after that, uh, the uh, complex uh, calculation algorithm for the computer language that would help to uh, enhance the computer general design. So let me... Uh, and what the, what is the computational design? This computational design means with the combination of human intelligence, so human mind, uh, as an input, and after that we would uh, we have to feed in some computer algorithm or something computer language as a, as a simple language, uh, the computer language that we have to feed in. After that, it should combine with uh, some. Uh, after that, combining this those two features, after that the it's become the a uh, wonderful nice. Uh, design output design so it's that was the computational design so <clears throat> i think most of the people know that uh, uh knows that about the what what uh, the words become compu computational design come from computation so what is the computation stand for the calculation for a specific uh specific algorithm specific uh, codes uh, script example the so many difficult language so that should be st stand in the computer so that should process uh, most of the uh, architects most of the interior designers most of the building designers are rely to learn about what kind of uh, language was that what kind of uh, uh, language are using what kind of uh, parameters and what kind of that feeding into the computer after that uh, with uh, with the lesser time with uh, some short period of time the design should be enhanced with multiple options and uh, it should come very uh, feasible and uh, sustainable time okay so <clears throat> one more thing is computational design is the applications of uh, computer uh, computational strategy to design process it is the design process to uh, uh, to compute that uh, uh, that feed in the parameters or anything so after that, the computational computational strategy refers to, to the process of the taking design decisions decisions using computer language. See that. So the main important thing is the computer language. So computer language may be anything. I think you already already heard about the Python. You already heard about the C plus plus. I think some of the people use about the Grasshopper. So all of things that also kind of the computer language so most of the people uh 100 most of the people cannot understand this some of the people couldn't understand this but people have know how to use that people have uh eagerly used to know that how to do it how to take that process so computer language is also the very uh important role so that's uh, in the b model in the architect as a, a beam uh is a perspective that it's helps us us uh, approach help uh, users to combining their logics thoughts and uh, 3d geometrical and uh, some kind of calculations and uh, permutation combination example and also the uh, all this capacity we, uh, that uh, have to help to generate a complex form or anything form in structure example you see this, some uh, sort of videos here so it should <coughs> feasibly see that so that was the very important things to help the computational design. So after that, uh, most of the people uh, uh, knows that the programming. I think most of the people aware about the programming. So prog programming must be very difficult task to understand. What coding language is something, uh, I think C++, Python, also all the textual programs. That was the basic uh, traditional textual programming. So that most of the design most of the uh, <clears throat> design uh, environment so design environment rely on visual program visual programmers as a opposed uh, as a opposed to the traditional text based program so text based program out of suppose out of uh, 10 20 percent people also know the what the textual program means what is, what is the use of that textual program? But most of the building uh, builders, more, most of the architect, most of the interior designer does not know about the, some kind of uh, uh, difficult coding, difficult uh, textual things. So that would help uh, with the, this dynamo for uh, visually. So let's uh, have one of the example. Example, this is the creating a circle. Creating a circle with example of textual programs. Uh, that was uh, writing some kind of coordinate, some kind of feeding x y coordinate. After that, extracting the point and creating the circle. So it's all the, all the some kind of steps to follow that. 
and one is the some kind of uh, visual thing suppose you have to see the in background into the circle you have to uh, use that number you have to slide a number you have to increase and decrease the value and after that creating the geometry and all these things should be in the visualization things so it should use uh, it should use programmer and non programmer also this it should both the ways uh, to use that any anyone can use that so I think one of the example, let's take one of the simple, uh, simple basic example. So <clears throat> I think most of the people are aware about the paper crane model, origami paper crane model. So in in the, how to in the output they become an output. Some uh, some of the uh, people use the textual program, textual base. Some of the people use the graphical base. But in less time, what outcome should be them uh, within 10 minutes within 20 minutes uh, the output should be given so in this example see one one is the textual information textual instruction that it should step step by step uh, explanation so <laughs> starting the sequence folding papers and this and this and this after repeating that side and the output out, output should become and next next is what the graphical representation, some kind of drawing, some kind of arrow, some kind of step by step. But most uh, the, in comparison of textual instru uh, instruction and a graphical instruction, most of the people adapt fast by the uh, graphical instruction because it should help to visualize. It should help to fast imagine in my in my thoughts, in your thoughts. It should be very fast to imagine. It is very fast to outcome. So I think textual inst instruction maybe take 20 minutes and graphical instruction maybe take 12 minutes, 10 minutes. It depends upon. So most of the people, 80, 90 people are uh, fast way to follow that graphical instruction. That's why, that's why uh, Dynamo is also the example of that visual programming tools so <clears throat> so in the uh, now we have come to the some part of dynamo what is dynamo so dynamo is a tool in built inside the Revit. so that provide graphical access to programmer interface programming interface which aim to access both programmer and non-programmer most of the 80 90 percent architect does not know the programmer and uh, does not know the programmer programming language c++ python language does not know about that some of the people know that but most of the people cannot access all this da data all this uh, coding language so most of the people have used the easy way to provide their outputs provide their uh, design outcomes to very fast so how to be that productive so that should be uh, the, uh, with the help of this dynamo visual programming it should help very fast uh, productivity okay so suppose uh, it's also uh, uh, provide visual approach uh, to programming more suitable for architecture engineers and other designers and 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 there is the benefit also benefit is a dynamo uh, uh, using benefit is the automatic repetition uh, repetitive task in the design activities and uh, generate multiple uh, design options also and after that customizing their programs in multiple options multiple projects and after that uh, check their beam uh, check their beam model uh, 4d 5d model as a uh, quality check also that should all the benefit of that uh, dynamo but how to you what is the uses of that uses is one is the automation automation means uh, the repetitive task should be come into the automation suppose i am uh, making one of the creating seed making the 10 10 to 20 minutes and after in 100 time they are all, almost take 3 4 hours so in one time you will have help of script with have of any some kind of uh, languages that should help to automate this uh, step with 3 hours into the some point of 5 to 10 minutes to creating that that should be the automatic uh, creation and one is that next is the dynamics there is exploration exploration means to access the uh, some kind of in the i'm talking about the in terms of revit uses so revit uh, use revit is the uh, <clears throat> majorly used for the uh, uh, data and uh, all these information so uh, the the dynamo also that explore that uh, data and that information to extract to another form and into another area to use that uh, you that uh, convert it into that uh, for um, uh, use that information into uh, exchange for some kind of model information also design with the aspect of design also that should be exploration 
and the one is the in the after that making the design one is the generative design generative design means it should give them uh, multiple options of that uh, design suppose we have to feed in some uh, parameters some uh, some kind of uh, spaces some kind of uh, furniture and aspect that the generative design gives some multiple options with reading all these parameters of sun path or sun path or space or uh, interior or exterior part so all this uh, uh, should be give the generative designs uh, options so uh, let me explain in the uh, further slide so <clears throat> one is the is, this is the kind of example with dynamo via uh, automatic creation i have supposed uh, i have hundreds uh, in my uh, commercial project yeah uh, hospital project example any uh, my project there are more than i think uh, 20 50 uh, 70 100 plus 100 seats should be created so it should take time uh, for 5 to 10 minutes 5 to 10 minutes 20 minutes so it should create the multiple tasks multiple tasks uh, multiple repetitive tasks so it should create with the help of dynamo it should create within the uh, one click okay so how to do that so let's see uh, some uh, this video <laughs> this is the uh, interface of the rabbit so i am just opening uh, one of the uh, uh, project so <clears throat> Okay, so in this year, see, there is the seed all here. Let me create a new seed like this. And after that, <clears throat> see, there is uh, no variable uh, uh, seed. And I think most of the people heard about the, the transmittal uh, making in the AutoCAD. Some, some most of the people use the AutoCAD. So that's, they should make their transmittal seeds. Suppose that that should be a uh, plan A uh, seat number, drawing number, uh, that should drawn by, approved by uh, floor plan, elevation, plumbing drawing, HBAC, HBAC drawing, electrical layout. So all the seat transmitters should be, must be 100 seat, uh, must be 50 seat, must be uh, 20 seat, must be detailed plan seat. So all are in the Excel format, okay? So how to use that from Excel to Revit? I, we have to data uh, input from Excel data, Excel seat, into the Revit. So how to use, use that within the uh, with the help of Dynamo? Let's check how to do that. See this, uh, sorry. <clears throat> so there, so there is a creating some uh, the seed into the transmittal part. After that, I'm going to the manage tab within the Dynamo player and the Dynamo. Uh, and there is the Dynamo player I'm opening above. So in the Dynamo player, uh, see, there's some kind of script here. See, the seed creation is the uh, that uh, input. I'm going to the edit input. I'm going to browse path that uh, file. Suppose that uh, transmittal file, Excel seed. So suppose Excel uh, seed list was I'm opening above. And after that, <clears throat> we have to select the one title block family. So name should be all seats, same name. And after that, I'm click clicking the one loaded family of the A1 seat, A2 seat. After that, see the A1 seat should be loaded automatically. And you have to load it again also into the, uh, what, into the families, uh, loading the family, suppose A0, A1, A2, A3, A4. That's your choice. Okay, I'm creating the A1 metric. And after that, I'm opening the uh, Dynamo player. And see, I'm inputting this uh, A1 browse path and again, all the seed plan again. And the, just one click and run it path. After that, see, some, some created seed should be here. So in the, see, in the back side, see, on, on the playing section, see, all this part transmitter seed a1 site plan floor plan elevation sections all should be created okay and after that see uh, if opening this edit path see let me see in the, into the dynamo interface like this yeah, data export data from excel to uh, excel to uh, file file path seat name this all are some kind of visual program, visual visually uh, nodes. Okay. So after that, um, that's uh, some kind of 
uh, exporting this this was the main uh, nodes that we have to use about extracting from excel data to revit okay one is the file path after that see this is the title block uh, family that where it should be put in by number seat number seat name and uh, what is the title block of the this all the some kind of notes are available after that i am creating this uh, seat after that some of the lists will become up here and it should be uh, list number a uh, drawn by check by should be different so it should remove from uh, that item into that excel item so get item and the uh, remove item that should be uh, adding that item into the row and columns all this had happen and after that <coughs> just run it same thing should be make it into this plumbing side plumbing all these uh, framing sections hbsc layout so it should be making all this in one run one script this is the uh, very fast way to creating the seats automatic seat creation Okay. One is the some kind of exploration via Dynamo. Exploration means uh, some kind of adaptive facade, adaptive uh, simulation. So I think you already uh, know about the, some yeah, uh, this Alvar Tower, AI yeah, Alvar Tower. So that should be uh, a combine, combination of the uh, creating the facade uh, with the direction of the sun. Suppose the sun, uh, sun uh, rays was very high it should be open and the sun was into the shaded area the the facade should be the facade panel should be open because the sunlight should be uh, sunlight yeah, lighting should be the uh, come into inside the building so uh, let's have some uh, video about this how to create it that see uh, i'm see i'm creating some kind of uh, revit interface so i'm creating one kind of family uh, that and after that i'm creating some kind of uh what uh, circular uh, circular facade okay not straight facade circular facade suppose let me let me jump into some kind of this circular facade with the uh with this parameter some something like this okay See, the pattern should be, uh, base should be uh, half into the, some kind of parameters input here. After that, see, some uh, parameters, uh, some uh, facade should be developed. So in next, this, after this creating that facade, let's have the creating some, uh, that panel, small one part panel should be made. See, I'm opening some kind of this uh, parts. It, there should be make some kind of uh, X, uh, let's have a look into this part after all creating that geometry, all creating that parameters. After that, see some facade should be open. Okay. Some facade should be made. So it, this was the one particular elements. Okay. One particular elements to be uh, grouped by the triangular shape. Okay. After that opening facade 0.5, this was controlled by some uh, parameters. See, after that, I'm loading into this uh, facade. After loading into this placement into this facade, see, the older parts should be uh, making that. So after that, <clears throat> after that, see, some part is open, some part is not open. So let's have uh, creating the, opening the dynamo and the, with the help of some script. And let's see how it works between uh, uh, to creating, to setting the sun settings. So after that, see, see the numbering, uh, the in the, the base should be increases, the size should be increases, the facade also facade size also increases, increases. So with the uh, see, let me open some kind of uh, uh, <clears throat> sun settings here, additional setting with the help of sun settings here. Uh, we have to single day, and after that, we have to creating that location about this uh, Dubai site. Okay, after that, we are creating the time zone. Okay, Le placing the time zone uh, with the variation of evening, suppose morning, suppose like this. So, after that, see in 1 p.m., X, one side is open, one side is closed. So, I am just running the within opening the script. After that, see uh, uh, running the script automatic mode, and I'm just in the 
in the Dynamo is a uh, little bit. And see, running this script, uh, some kind of, see, the simulation should be come up. Okay. After that, see, this all the, some kind of script was running be behind that. See, after that, see, I'm changing some kind of uh, uh, time zone. One side is open. See, let me see that. Uh, 9 p.m. was there. And 11 p.m. was there. Le one side is open. One side is closed. This was the all the settings of the with the help of Dynamo. So it should be possible to uh, read that uh, according to the sun settings. Okay. And this was the exploration. And the next is the <clears throat> generative design. Generative design means uh, to help uh, explore the, the uh, <coughs> design process. <coughs> Architect and the designer and the engineer that have uh, that have used that uh, uh, design software to along with input their parameters such, such as uh, including their requirements such as the materials such as the method costs uh, some some people some architects some uh, engineer that used to have their uh, uh, cost uh, reduce so how to do that how to, what is the possible idea what is the possible uh, design to have used to make it so this software should uh, analyze and uh, this permutation combination of uh, this should be better, this should be equal, equal, uh, uh, ecologically, uh, um, it should be some kind of uh, base design and it should be some kind of, uh, and basically it's give the uh, generating the alternative designs. So maybe one, uh, maybe two, three items. So I think this video will see us see the some kind of uh, multiple design in this area that should be given. Suppose all this uh, within feeding. Firstly, we have to fit the requirements about that. Okay, and then uh, let's have uh, uh, another uh, some kind of some sort of video that uh, uh, multiple design option using Dynamo with Revit. See? And in this, uh, this was the basically for the office space with creating the combination of uh, uh, their outputs, how many seated are available, what are their analysis, how, what, what, what is the parametric input and what is the basic idea of uh, achievement where uh, our design goals. So let's uh, play this. Uh, let me stop here and again, resharing it again. Generative design is a design exploration process to quickly generate and evaluate high-performing design alternatives. Until now, many generative design tools have been hard to use because they required our customers to know how to code, understand special terminology, or know how genetic algorithms work. Now you can use generative design directly in Revit to quickly generate design alternatives based on your goals, constraints, and inputs. Generative Design provides a set of sample study types to demonstrate how this tool can be used to generate outcomes for design challenges. You can easily run one of the predefined studies or recipes with Generative Design in Revit, such as workspace layout or massing. Let's suppose you want to determine the best arrangement of desks in a large room. Your goals are to maximize the number of desks while also maximizing views to the outside. You may also want to minimize the distance from each desk to the nearest exit. After generative design has completed a study, you can explore the design alternatives to find the solution that best meets your needs. For each outcome, the parallel coordinates chart highlights its input and output values. You can also use this chart to filter and prioritize outcomes by simply clicking and dragging over one or more of the columns. Another way to review and analyze outcomes is through a scatter plot. You can use this chart's options to change the criteria used for the X and Y axes and format the outcome values. Once you've selected the outcome you'd like to implement in your model, simply select that outcome and click Create Revit Elements. The design change will appear in the model immediately. 
As you can see, this sample study helped me arrange the placement of desks in a large office room, giving me an optimal layout corresponding to my design goals. There are two other studies or recipes ready to be used. Maximize window views. You may use this sample study type with generative design to determine the best position in a room for optimal views to the outside. Three box massing. You may use this sample study to generate alternatives for three adjacent buildings as simple masses to maximize floor area while minimizing surface area. Start using generative design in Revit today to quickly evaluate design options and save time with automation. So, uh, that was the main idea of uh, generative design to uh, become our design options with multiple multiple aspects, multiple categories, multiple discipline also and all this variable should be uh, showing, showing that after it should be uh, immediately making that option, selected option into the rabbit. So that was very uh, first process to outcome, uh, we, uh, to study that uh, out, output of the of our designs options. So this was the basically a basic ideas of uh, for Dynamo. So I think uh, I'm over, to Soma, Soma, to continue. Okay, thank you, uh, Varapam, for that insightful session. Uh, so from here we'll be taking forward with the twin motion. So we'll be discussing about the twin motion and we'll give a brief description what twin motion does. Just allow me a moment. Let me just share my screen. Okay, so uh, twin motion, uh, this is a real time render in twin motion. So what are the goal of this particular webinar? So to provide an understanding capabilities of twin motion as a real time visualization tool. Understanding how you can export uh, in Revit files with the uh, twin motion that is the direct interoperability with Revit uh, software. So uh, also we'll be creating scenes and presenting them so how we can render them so the instant rendering or how we can provide different type of layouts with it we'll be looking into that so what it does specifically it gives you the benefits uh, what are the benefits and what are the integration and what how you can sync them uh, in your uh, particular project and the scene management right so what is twin motion basically? So twin motion is a visualization tool. So this visualizations tool is used for your uh, creating different type of visualization under the process of uh, using the power of imagination. So you can uh, bring your imagination into life via the twin motion. So here, if you see, what does it provide us? So twin motion is a real time 3D architectural visualization tool for uh, developing and pro providing high quality images, panoramas uh, and standard and also 360 VR videos that is uh, virtual reality videos in seconds. Right. So what are the features of that? So it gives you a real time 3D uh, rendered environment uh, as well as you can also uh, view the entire world virtually then you can go for high quality image rendering which is your cost saving from catching designs to engineer flaws because if there is a direct link with the revit so the syncing between the two softwares is uh, pretty much easier 
you can define the panoramas through BIM process. You can define the panoramas. It is easier to uh, manage the arrangement of design requirement in that case. Then as I already mentioned uh, previously that you can also go for the 360 videos with uh, uh, visual explanations. And then we are having the time utility. So rendering is a time taking process. So how we can manage the time taking, how we can render safe between the BIM environment and also keeping in mind that any changes that is done to the model, BIM model can directly get interoperated in your rendering scene. So uh, here you can see there is a brief uh, description uh, how you can uh, understand that when a two set of uh, renderings are there. So this is a ray tracing software. So this is a software rendering software, which is usually taking a, a time more time. And this is a twin motion rendering, which is pretty much you basically you don't have to follow those rendering process in, in this twin motion. So here is a, a little snap of the twin motion. These are pretty much That was a small clip to just give you an insight. What does a twin motion do? Uh, so we'll move towards uh, the features of the twin motion now. So why uh, we are preferring to use the twin motion because it is having a user-friendly UI that is user interface. Uh, we are having a user-friendly interface. So you can see this is specifically the interface of your twin motion where uh, the complex uh, user setting uh, to a user-friendly user, -friendly user uh, interface is there. So a simple drag and drop of element. So you don't have to specifically search uh, and you don't have to apply the element. You can put the material and drag uh, using the drag and drop uh, method. Is browse of materials or one click render image. So you don't have to sit for hours to render a specific scene or a walkthrough in it. Within a click, it would give you the real time rendering process, right? So it adds life in seconds with a drag and drop asset. So it is not only related to your material, but it is also related to your uh, assets also, like your vegetations, your uh, elements, your side components. You can automate the vehicular pedestrian path, human path. You can automate that. You can drag the change of the season from different weathers or daytime uh, accordingly. Then these are the uh, many assets uh, and many uses which uh, Twin Motion provides. 
So still images uh, you can create, you can also uh, go for interactive experience using this particular twin motion. Immersive experience, it provides a wide range of uh, libraries. Through the libraries, you can specifically uh, choose and you can work on it. Then we are having the linear output. So it is a one single output. So whatever you're putting up under this particular area, so this would be a one single output. Now the interoperability between the twin motion, as you can see here, the twin motion uh, is specifically inbuilt in the Revit itself. So you can create a direct link with the model. You can synchronize, you can make any changes in the model and it would get updated in your twin motion as well in the rendering atmosphere. Also, uh, you can uh, access it from any point of time using uh, the twin motion command, which would automate the process of the twin motion. The design and the visualization process can then be continued in the twin motion as well. Right. So at any point of time, if uh, Revit need to get uh, updated and you can use the directly synchronization option to update your model as well. So this is the uh, workflow from a CAD environment to a twin motion to a VR that is a virtual reality within clicks. So this is a instance uh, project uh, uh, images, still images. So you get the high quality imagery experience. You can create your renders, offline renders, your interactive panoramas, views, your uh, scenes, and also you can share it with a simple URL, those images, your links with the image. Also, that light rendering also is uh, very much is, uh, easier and it is uh, wonderful with the twin motion. So, uh, but a twin motion comes with minimum requirement of your. Um, system so it need to have a small to average project if you are using so it need to be less than a 1 gb uh, geometry data uh, suitable for real time 3d presentation video generation in hd mode so all format up to 4k is possible uh, but not suitable for vr if your configuration is less than 1 gb geometry data it, it would not be suitable for a vr also uh, 4k rendering or 360 panorama video the operating system for your Windows specification need to be 10, 11 with uh, 64 bits. The graphic card need to be your 6 GB dedicated memory or card. You can also have a benchmark score of 10,000 with the latest driver that is available to you. Coming to the CPU processor. So CPU processor can have a benchmark of 2000 higher and the system memory can have a ramp of 16 GB or more. And you need to have a hard drive space of 30 GB of free disk space. So this is specifically the system configuration which you require for running this particular uh, software. So I'll just share a video where uh, I'll show how we can render the interior and exterior of uh, using the twin motion. Okay. So uh, to begin with the <clears throat> twin motion, you need to install the uh, plugin uh, that we are having. That is the twin motion plugin. We call it the data smith. So uh, you need to choose uh, your operating system. And accordingly for each type of software, you have this uh, plugin which you can install. That is the data smith plugin, right? 
So here we would be installing it for the Revit uh, version. So I would be downloading this option of the particular uh, data smith exporter for Revit. So you can download this. Now this would be linking your uh, Revit and Twinmotion in a single source, right? Nextly, this is a, a Revit model, which I would be linking it uh, with the Twinmotion. So as you can see, these are the options which you can avail it from the view tab. And I would be directly syncing it uh, into your twin motion. Here, once you link it into your twin motion environment, you can import the file. So you can either go for the geometry or direct link, or if you have to go for landscape or point cloud, you can choose that option. So I'll be going for the link option because I'm linking it via the uh, Revit with uh, the materials I'm linking it through. So you can see it is creating a direct link from the Revit and uh, here you can find your Revit model. Now this is the entire model and you can also look into that this is a cityscape which is the backdrop uh, of this particular uh, plugin uh, uh, that has been provided. Right. So we have various uh, keys to control the twin motion. So we have the pan for or uh, orbit keys, your look around keys, right? You know, if you have to move up and down, so you can use that WASD keys and up and down also q &E. So this is specifically if you have, uh, if you are into gaming, so you would have a better uh, understanding about how you can uh, control the twin motion in that environment. So here you would see that if I have to uh, link it directly from the uh, specific Revit, so I made few changes under that uh, Revit and here you would note that I have removed the trees. So the trees are also been removed from this particular uh, twin motion, but just through the direct synchronization that is provided, right? So uh, that is how uh, you can directly uh, work with the Revit as well as the twin motion just by synchronizing your uh, uh, software that is through the twin motion that we are having. So you can rotate, revolve uh, the uh, particular building here. Also, there are the options where you can go for the object. So here we have various options that is uh, your plantation, your vegetation, right? You can choose different type of grass materials that is provided. You can also capture your uh, uh, location. So you can also input the location area where you want. You can capture it. The surrounding would get inbuilt in this particular environment. So let's suppose you are searching any area in Delhi or maybe in Noida, whatever the area you are searching here. So you can capture this area using the setting. You can also go for the character path, vehicular path. So there we have the different type of paths which you can choose as we were talking about. So if I have to create some of the character parts here, so this would specifically be, you can define the junctions and the points of uh, creating the paths here. So you can also control the path direction. You can control the volume of the uh, particular uh, that is with the density of it. That means how dense this uh, path should be or how you would be managing off. Now, if you have to remove, you can simply delete those junctions that you have created with your uh, path. Uh, then we have the vehicular path also. So you can also define the vehicular path using that. Uh, now we'll be moving to the other settings that we are having. So these are some of the lighting exposure settings, some weather settings. So you can choose the weather, which weather you want. So there is specifically the weather, the seasons that is here. So different weather style, you can go from rainy monsoon, summer to winter, right? So these are the different seasons you can see, you can uh, toggle between the season. You can also you know, look into the graph and you can also uh, calculate the growth that how much, what should be the wind speed, the direction of the wind. Is it a smoggy or what should be the temperature at that particular point of time? So you can all control all these particular images. Now the last is uh, how you can uh, specifically capture the image, the panorama, the videos in the twin motion. So this is what it deals with the uh, capture different type of images, the videos in the twin motion. Okay, 
So nextly we'll uh, move into the material statement. So here you can see that uh, the linked file that we have linked, it is having how many set of uh, parameters which are there. So the set of parameters we can look into the objects that has been linked, you can see through it. Also, if you have to look into the daylight timing, you can look into the daylight timing as well. You can also define your view point, your uh, pedestrian point or your ground, how your ground should specifically be viewing in this uh, with this particular uh, option from the setting. So these are the different type of orientations which you can look through it. Okay. So now we would be moving into the interior of a kitchen. So we would be defining the interior of a kitchen where we would be putting up the material, different set of materials. Uh, also, we would be rendering this area. Where you can also, you know, put on the lights, uh, different type of lights that is available here. So here you can see that uh, this is an interior setup of the kitchen where you can choose the material so you can select the object and you can search for the material whatever material is suited so the uh, twin motion has a huge library of materials which you can choose from here if you have any type of specific code uh, of your material you can also search it via that you can also download them from the external source uh, under there so I'll be going for some kind of uh, material that is uh, specifically stone or maybe some other set of material, maybe stone only I'll prefer on top. So you can see these are the varied materials which we are having. So you can also go for the stone material. Also, you can choose some other material here. You can increase the roughness of this particular texture. You can increase the scale or you can control the scale of this texture that how this material should be looking. Uh, so these are, you can also change on to the colors, right? So you can control the uh, glow of that material, whether it should be uh, having a matte finish or not. You can control all these properties under the material property setting. Right. So also we are having different type of, you know, it is we are having different set of categories, whether the, you are choosing for your wall, whether you are choosing for your ceiling, right, whether you are choosing if you want to go for glass category, you can choose those. So right now I'm looking for the ceiling category where I can choose for my ceiling material here. We also have the libraries of the uh, accessories. Like here, you can see that we are looking for the cabinets, right? Uh, so these are the uh, furniture cabinets which we are putting. You can control the dimension of the cabinets. So you can uh, control the X, Y, Z uh, dimension of this particular cabinet here. So uh, using the uh, gizmo tool, you can control the cabinet. You can also move the cabinet uh, accordingly and you can place it. So there we have the storage areas where specifically using the storage areas, you can also control, uh, increase the uh, material, change the material. Also, there are different set of uh, available uh, tools that is there. So you can change from here. So these are the accessories that is uh, provided here as you can see. So some uh, kitchen accessories, as you can see here, so you can customize this. So these are not necessarily need to be done in Revit. So you can also customize it according to the scene that you like to create, right? So just from the search tool, you can just search the specific element and there are dedicated objects which are there. So from the objects, you can specifically choose which type of material you want. Right. So this is just the modeling, how we are modeling, just customizing the scene with different set of elements. So you can just put it, you can scale the object according to your uh, requirement. You can you choose the material for the same. So as you can see, we are controlling, putting some in uh, plants uh, in, in this kitchen area. So 
So you can control if you are using any of the transparent object, you can control the opacity of it, right? The transparency of that object specifically, right? So you can control it uh, via the options of each and every accessories that you are using. It has the options of controlling them accordingly. So here you can see this uh, as we are setting up the uh, kitchen area, you would know that this is something which is the still image it is providing us. It is not that we have to render this image at a later point and we have to get that we have to sit for time hours to get that still image. But uh, here you would see that we have uh, whatever we are putting up here, this would be the still function of this particular uh, image. So here I have, you can also put some light here. So I have chosen the light option. You can put the light. So it you can also control the intensity of it, the color of the light, whether you are put going for warm light or cool light, right? Also, you can uh, look into the uh, luminous uh, also, whether this should have shadow in it or not, whether the shadow is on or off. So you can see that putting and setting up the scenario of the kitchen, it would change the outlook of what was previous one and what we are getting uh, moving towards in the final uh, outcome, right? So here you would see that also we have some different set of appliances that has been provided here. So with this, you can move forward and set up your, uh, you know, area. You specifically don't need to do that into your uh, Revit, but you can also customize it in your twin motion as well. So here you would see that uh, these are the images which you can take a snap and the images would be available here, right? So these are your steel images. These are your rendered. You can set up the position of these images and these are your rendered images, which is specifically giving you the outcome as well. So I'm taking a snap of this particular that is under the image. You can also set up your focal length of that particular uh, view right, the length uh, of that type, what should be the lens type, right? You can also look into whether what type of rendering you want, clear rendering or anything of that sort, you can uh, choose that option. You can rename your views from here itself. And once you rename it, this you can extract the data from here and you can store it as your JPEG image and you can use it for your presentation and all. Right, so you can also control the uh, shadow analysis or the shadows of this particular environment. How much shadow uh, should you be having? So this way you can develop the various still images with different different positions and angle. You can take a image. Uh, you can create the uh, image of this particular view. Right. So this is exporting the image. So our render is ready. So it is exporting the image. So you can see that how much time it is taking to export this particular images. Right. So these are all your rendered images as you can look into here. So there is no external time of rendering uh, needed. You would get these still images, uh, which is very quick. So whatever time it is needed, it is needed for selecting of the material and setting up your uh, views accordingly. Right, so that was one sort of a interior rendering of a kitchen. We'll move into the exterior rendering. So also we have the properties of exterior rendering where you can use the different sort of, you know, uh, wall finishes that is there. So specific type of wall finishes, fabric finishes are there. Right, so you can choose those type of finishes and you can inbuilt on it some uh, footpath uh, uh, pavers uh, uh, are there. So you can choose it accordingly. You can also scale up your different uh, objects. So according uh, to your visibility criteria, you can scale them up. You can rotate the uh, or, uh, image also, whatever the material that you are choosing, you can rotate that also. Uh, you can also use and change the color of that particular uh, material that you are using. So as you can see, the glass that we are using, the difference, uh, how it is changing the tint color, you can change and put the color uh, from different 
uh, segment you can also copy the base color of that specific environment you can look into that how i am matching the window color from a uh, dedicated uh, window to uh, area where we can just copy the color code of that specific area right so we are having the dropper tool using the dropper tool you can also select any of the specific uh, material or the color that is required So I have been put some footpath out here. So pavers and footpath, you can put it on here uh, according to your exterior. So we have this exterior set of tiles that is here you can control. So these are pretty much easier. So you can control the roughness, the scale of that. You can also change the color accordingly. So here you can see that we are just putting some kind of retaining wall uh, under this category. So we have given for the wall uh, texture here. So you can see uh, these are your final outcomes that we are having uh, under this uh, still uh, once the rendering is done so if you have to go for any kind of night rendering also you can put your uh, you can change the landscape basically so if you want you can go for changing the landscape so it would give you a rocky glass grassland and a flat surface to a specific type of landscape are there uh, these are some of the still images that you have you can see that some of the lights that we have used in here uh, you can also uh, go for some set of plantation and vegetation. So you can see it is so easy to uh, put up the plantation and vegetation in this particular area. So it is not that one pick tool. So you can just use the brush tool and you can uh, define the diameter of the your vegetation and accordingly you can run through the brush. So accordingly, your uh, uh, the nearby uh, or the outskirt of this particular building, you can have the scenario of that your green vegetation. Also, you can control the density of your uh, specific uh, vegetation accordingly. Then, uh, as I said, we have some lights, so you can also uh, avail some of the exterior lights that is uh, there. You can fix those light in twin motion, so it is not necessary that you need to bring the light from the Revit. You can also fix and search some light or chandeliers, whatever it is required from uh, uh, twin motion itself, as it is having a Revit library in here. You can also define the projection of the light, how you are putting, whether you are put using a spotlight or whether it is a focused light, right? Uh, you can also choose on the angle, the color, the attenuation, the shadow of the light, the intensity of the light. So all this category, which are your illumination specific, you can choose it uh, inside the twin motion as well. So these are some of the night uh, render views. Uh, just by changing the daylight time, you can uh, go for the night render views and it would give you a vivid different scape of views uh, according to the different time. Right? So you can capture those images from going to the image section and you can capture those images. So these are some of the views of uh, that we are having. So that is uh, all about the twin motion uh, that we are having. So a twin motion is again uh, to end with it gives it brings your uh, project into life with different rendering techniques that is available uh, to us. Right. So it creates a success story uh, of your building uh, and you can create a success story of your building using the twin motion. So that is all from our site i think uh, 
you all can ask your question, whatever question you are having regarding the two topics that we have covered in today's session. So any question, anything that you're having, we can take that up. Okay, so uh, one of the anonymous attendee has a question that can twin motion be used with AutoCAD? Uh, yes, uh, twin motion can also be used with AutoCAD. So you need to install the Datasmith exporter. So as I showed in the initial that uh, your Datasmith exporter are available for different different set of uh, softwares that is provided, right? So you can uh, go uh, online and you can search for that. Okay, so uh, Twin uh, Ramesh is having another question. Uh, so he's saying that Twin Motion plugin is free for Revit or any annual subscription is required. So uh, to access the Twin Motion, uh, you need to have a subscription to standalone with Revit. That is that comes with the AEC collection, right? So uh, in twenty twenty four version from twenty twenty four version, it is directly uh, put as a plugin in. Revit itself, so you can use it directly from there.
uh okay uh danny is having a question can twin motion uh support in 2021 okay so you are not having the direct interoperability as a plugin uh, in the 2021 version but yes through data smith exporter you can still use the twin motion so you need to install the data smith exporter and using the data smith exporter you can render in twin motion but the only thing uh, change would be there in that is uh, there would be no direct link or direct synchronization in revit and uh, your twin motion it is only available uh, in uh, from 2023.1 update from 2023.1 update Revit. So 2024 has the full-fledged uh, synchronization with Revit and uh, your uh, twin motion. Any, uh, is there any question about the uh, uh, Dynamo related? I think it's a little bit harder to understand about the computational design. So if anybody uh, relying on it, so you should ask any related questions about it. <laughs> Okay, so on that note, I think uh, we can end this webinar here. Thank you everyone uh, for your uh, patience here. And thank you, uh, Ms. Kanchan for attending the webinar and all the other attendees. Thank you so much. We'll be closing up with the webinar. uh yes uh in basic models so you can create the uh, basic geometry and complex geometry with parameters some input so you can make with with the help of dynamo for uh, mm -hmm. making your complex geometrical design so yes uh, uh Danny Johnson. okay thank you everyone have a good day we are ending the webinar.